Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a freelancing Q&A. So I asked you guys on Snapchat as well as on Instagram to ask me some questions on freelancing. So I am a freelance makeup artist on the side. So YouTube is my full-time job, but I do freelance as a makeup artist. I still do. These are just going to be my opinions, my personal experiences, things that I've gone through and things that I've learned along the way. I've been freelancing for about three years, but I've been doing YouTube for a while, since 2011. So they kind of go hand in hand, like learning how to do my own makeup. I just ventured into learning how to do makeup on others. So I do have a ton of questions, so I don't want to ramble on too much. So I'm going to start off with Instagram. So the first question that I'm going to answer is from X Supreme Lee, and she asked how to figure out price setting. So I touched on this briefly in my last Q&A, and a lot of you guys ask me like how much I charge, and I do answer like when people ask me privately, or if a client is asking me how much I'm charging, obviously, which I always do that via email. Like I never just DM people like my prices and stuff like that. I don't know, I just guess it's something personal. A lot of people just want to know so that they can judge you. So that's that's why I kind of like stay away from just posting my prices like just on Instagram or anywhere. I've seen the price range go from anywhere from like $50 or even $45 in some states and I've seen prices go up to like $500 depending on if it's bridal or it's not so it's kind of like a question that a lot of people don't like answering but I say anywhere in between the range of like $75 to like $150 is normally what people start off with charging. I know like Sephora charges a certain amount, Mac charges a certain amount. I think Mac is like 50 or 55 and Sephora is around that range, I think. So I would just go based off of like what your local Sephora is charging, but then go up more because you are charging your own service. Like you're not working for anyone. I would say anywhere around there, but I wouldn't go lower than 55 per person. Makeup gets expensive, lashes. You have to take into account all the items that you're using on someone, or if you're going to them, if they're coming to you so it's hard to price things especially as a freelancer whether you are doing makeup or not like in any freelancing business it's hard to like measure your worth um, but just always remember your worth and I would say like ask your friends it also depends where you live like it depends on the country depends on the state depends on the demand depends on how long you've been doing so there's so many other variables that go into pricing find out what your local like Sephora is charging Mac and you should be charging more than that because they're charging that amount because they're also either getting paid hourly or however that works it's different it's separate you're doing your own thing so but somewhere in that range you know not too low not too high I want people to be able to book me I don't want to overcharge to the point where people can't that's not really gonna help your business it's not gonna help your business grow people are not gonna come back and they're not gonna let other people know about it if they feel like they were overcharged so it's really a tricky one but there's just so many other variables that go into it but if you message me or email me and tell me like a little bit more about how long you've been freelancing and where you live we can definitely talk about it or you could even snap me but tell me like how long you've been doing it what are you using in your kit where do you live and all that jazz because those things have to be taken into account Evelyn1431 asked, what's the maximum number of clients you take in one day? Well, I did a huge wedding party of about like 12 in DR. But besides weddings, like if you're not taking weddings into account, I would say like six or seven because if you think of it like this, one hour or one hour and a half per client there's not that many hours in the day that people want to get their makeup done like not a lot of people want to get their makeup done at three in the morning so you have to take account like most people will start at like six that's like the earliest they'll ask for and the latest is like 10 p.m so really just depends if i have the time in the day i will take the client i try to group as many as i can so if i have like a 6 a.m a 3 p.m and then like a 9 p.m i try to like Maybe accommodate it so that it's easier for me to just have it not so back to back but a little bit closer like I don't like huge gaps in between my clients because then I feel like I can't really get too much done in between but I've taken five clients I've taken one or two it really just depends if the demand is there I take it like prom season you know I was taking about six people in one day and it's crazy it's very hectic at that moment like when you're taking six seven clients but I like to take my sweet time I'd rather take my time and not force something and not overstress myself or rush a client and have the best work on one person. I don't like saying no to people, but if I know I'm just gonna be overworked, overburned, I'm not gonna give you my full, full energy and attention, I'm not gonna book it because I don't feel like that's a good experience. So I try to just make it work. You know, I take an account that an hour and a half per client or sometimes an hour and then clean up time and then if I wanna eat something, you know, you have to really take into account what's your limit, like how far do you wanna get pushed. If you are super hungry for it and you really wanna like hustle hard, like I would say like six or seven max 
It also depends on how long you take to do makeup. So if you're taking 30 minutes, you can obviously take a lot more clients in a day. But me, I'm a perfectionist. I really like to give my client the full experience. I talk a lot, so usually it runs to like an hour and a half. So you have to take into account like what time people want also. You know, if someone wants at 9 a.m., I'm gonna give them that 9 a.m. But if someone else wants at 9.30, I obviously can't take them at 9.30, I'd have to push it. So just, I like to like time manage myself. Hour and a half, like 20 minutes break, and then I can take the next person. So as long as I can fit them all in and everyone's happy and I'm not gonna be overworked, then I'm totally gonna book it because I like to say yes to everyone. You know, I like, it's not about the money, it's not about that. It's just, I hate saying no to people. Like I don't like disappointing people, especially if they watch my YouTube videos. I really wanna make sure that I'm there for everyone, especially for their big days. So Bravo Beauty 9 asked, which makeup artists do you look up to and why? Two of my really close friends, Charlene and Angie, are two makeup artists that I look up to just because I've seen them grow so much and I've seen them do things that were out of their comfort zone. Like Angie has taught me so much about makeup and the artistry. She's taught me so many valuable things that I still to this day use and I still learn from her. So I love learning from Angie. She's an amazing artist. And Charlene, I've seen Charlene grow just as a person, as a YouTuber, as a makeup artist. Like we've both grown grown together so I would say my closest friends are makeup artists that I look up to um, and there's tons of makeup artists I look up to like makeup by Mario like is one of the most famous ones obviously he's so inspirational but besides like youtubers like actual makeup artists there are tons I can maybe leave them down in my description bar but I don't like naming because there's so many like all the makeup artists I follow on Instagram are amazing and I would hate to just name a few because and then I would feel bad leaving out others so I'm not really just gonna name like one or two but I would say just Anyone who's following their dream, anyone who's grinding, anyone who's hustling, being self-employed and being a freelance makeup artist, if you do that, you inspire me. Like, I don't care if your client sells big, small, I don't care what you charge, like, you are inspiring because you are out there getting what you need to get done and you're doing what you want to do because it's the type of job that you have to get up and choose to do. It's not your typical nine to five. So if you're a freelance makeup artist, you inspire me and I truly, truly mean that. On Instagram, I just follow so many different types of makeup artists, people from other countries countries, people from my city, like so many different walks of life and they all inspire me. So I know that sounds really cliche, but it's true. Ex Melina, hey girl, asks, what is something you do that gets you going before having a client in your chair? So I like to listen to music, I like to have my coffee, I always wanna get my Starbucks in. So that's like my realistic answer, like literally get a Starbucks, get my AC bump in, have my lighting, have, having myself prepared really gets me going because I know it's gonna be good if I have like my beauty blender nice and wet already, I have my dishes out, like I have the palettes nice and out, ready to go like that gets me going because I love being organized so if my room is clean that really gets me going and it sounds so weird but it's true and mentally just remembering that that person didn't have to book me there's so many makeup artists out in the world and people are you know so good at doing their own makeup so especially now in this day and age if you are still booking me with all these YouTube tutorials like I appreciate you and I value you and I value your time and it goes so much farther than just like money it's literally you're giving me your hour and a half you are taking taking it out of your day to sit in my chair so to me that just gives me enough motivation to just really give it my all and make that experience like any of my clients know like I will you know really try to go above and beyond to make your experience amazing like I want you to feel at home in my house if you're coming to me or if I go to your house like I want to feel as close as possible like I want to become friends by the time I leave so really just remembering like where I started to prepare myself for a client I just brace myself I know that I relax I breathe I relax I know that if I make a mistake Mistake, it's always a lesson learned and never a mistake especially as a youtuber and like a beauty guru you know there's a lot of more pressure on me to you know be the same way as what I am on camera which all of my clients have always told me like you're exactly the same like the same personality you have on camera is what you have and that really just gets me going because I really want to be the best version of myself so I want all my clients to get that version that's what gets me going I just remember my journey and how far I've come and I'm just really blessed and grateful and that really just gives me a boost of um, energy and faith and yeah. So Beauty by Brina, what is your price? Also, do you do contracts? If so, what do they consist of? Do you do deposits? Do you charge late fees? Do you do airbrush? 
Also, how do you book destination weddings? So the pricing, I already touched on in my last video. I'll leave that one down below because I think that one also has a lot of great information. I've done a, quite a few of these freelancing videos, so I totally recommend watching all of those. And if you have to come back to this one, do come back. But I do do contracts, so I only do contracts for big parties. So Sweet Sixteens, weddings especially, like I always have contracts for my weddings. My mom actually helps me with them because she's really good at making contracts. But she basically just includes like a price breakdown, I was about to say product breakdown, a price breakdown, so like bride equals X amount, five bridesmaids at this amount, a mom, um, transportation fee, the address that I'm going to so that they can go over it and make sure I'm going to the right place, the date that I'm doing the makeup, and then they just send it back, you know, confirming. My mom actually helps me out with like making PDFs and making sure everything's, you know, squared off because she's really good at that and I'm not like I'm not a numbers kind of person I'm not a I'm not really good with like paperwork and PDFs and Excel sheets like I'm the worst with that so my mom actually helps me with that which I'm very blessed and grateful for that do I charge late fees I don't I should I include it in there but I actually never end up doing it because I'm just like I don't know I don't know if it's too nice but I just I know time is money but things happen I'm late all the time so I know you know especially in New York like like, there's traffic and there, people are doing things so I don't charge late fees if they're super late sometimes I just can't take the client like if it's over an hour like I just can't because there's other things that I have planned out or I have other clients coming in I try to work something out but I don't charge late fees I do charge deposits I never used to charge deposits but I started I think a year ago or a year and a half ago and what I do is I just take a small percentage of the total amount and I'll make that deposit so they will pay me via PayPal or Venmo or the cash app so I'll take like 10% of the X amount and I will charge that beforehand so if the total is one amount the day of they'll just minus what they deposited so let's just say hypothetically you're charging $50 and you want your deposit to be 10% they will give you that 10% beforehand so they'll give you the $5 deposit whatever you want to take quick pay PayPal and then the day of they'll give you the $50 minus the 10% it's already like in the price I have makeup artist friends who charge half up front so they'll ask for half up via quick pay or paypal and then when it gets closer to the date or the day of the client will then send over the rest via paypal or quick pay so i take a small percentage beforehand via paypal and then the day of i'll get the rest in cash i know that life happens so i only ask for a small percentage up front so it's not like gonna break the bank or anything so deposits are non-refundable like that should be across the board anyone who asks for a deposit it should be non-refundable because that's the point of the deposit you know if a client asks you for their money back I mean you have to state that it's non-refundable if you don't state that then they can ask for it back but I always state that mine is non-refundable because I feel like then what's the point of a deposit if it's gonna be refundable then people are just gonna pay the deposit cancel and ask for their money back so that's not how it works you have to make it non-refundable but you have to explain that either in a contract and an email and a text it has to be written out and they have to agree to that they have to agree that they read it because if not they're gonna say oh I didn't see that or whatever but have it written somewhere that your deposit is non-refundable. It'll save you so many headaches. It is so hot in my room right now, but we have to continue. So I currently do not use any airbrush machines. I just feel like my foundations are fine enough. I feel like airbrushing is kind of like limited, especially with foundation colors. I mean, don't get me wrong, it can look very natural, but I just prefer using like a beauty blender and different finishes. Like with airbrush, you know, there's just like one type of foundation. I mean, obviously there's different brands and stuff like that, but when it comes to actual foundations, I feel like I can really get the perfect color match, the perfect finish, I can mix them. So I just prefer using foundation, so I don't do airbrush. Um, sorry, my hair is bothering me. So most makeup artists, what they'll do is they will have the client pay for the hotel and the airfare and transportation and then either they'll lower their prices um, it depends obviously like where you are in the game if you just started off they won't charge the client and they'll just do the makeup for free and then just have the hotel and the airfare paid for or they'll just lower the prices dramatically um, it really just depends on how many people you're doing if you're doing like 12 people you have to count that up like add up how much that would be like let's say you were doing it in your city see how much the total is and then compare it to the amount of money that the airfare and the hotel is and then they would either give you the difference or you would not charge them like it really depends on how much you charge and how many people you're doing and where you're going so there's a lot it's hard to answer these types of questions like I've had people actually email me or message me or DM me or snapchat me like their exact situation like breaking down everything like with a lot of details and I was able to answer them um, but I hope that helps 
Have I ever done a full face on a client and then they say they don't like it? Did I redo it or what do I suggest? So I've never had a client tell me that they don't like their makeup. I've had a client tell me they don't like their lashes. A lot of my clients don't like lashes or the lashes that are like more dramatic. So what I'll do is I'll just end up taking the lashes off and putting on a different one or not using lashes or really small ones or more dramatic ones. That's really the only thing that I've ever changed is a lash and a lip color because those two are very specific. But I've never had someone tell me like, I hate the whole thing. I mean, thank God, because that would really like break my heart because I put a lot of work and effort. I take my clients very seriously Seriously, like when they sit down, I'm doing their makeup as if I was doing my own makeup for a big event. And I want to put my best face forward, so I want my clients to have their best face forward. So it's like they're walking out with my name on them, so they're like pretty much wearing me. Like if someone asks them, who did your makeup? I want it to be a positive experience, like a compliment, not like, girl, what is that? Who did your makeup? You know, so thankfully I've never had anyone hate their makeup. Um, everyone's always walked out super happy, and I'm always like, be honest with me, girl. Like, don't lie. Like, tell me, what do you want? Because sometimes you look at yourself in the mirror you're like shocked and some people are good at expressing themselves and some people are like poker face so sometimes I'm like oh my god I think they like don't like it but then they'll like message me later and be like sorry I was just like shocked or I was you know not in the best frame of mind or I was stressed or whatever it is but I'm so happy with it like none of my clients ever written back like I absolutely hated my makeup and it would really break my heart if someone went home and like changed it like that would really kill me so I just make sure that I really communicate with my client like, what exactly they're looking for and I think that's the key to a happy client is really asking so many questions like show me a picture of when you do your own makeup do you wear makeup what are you wearing let me see a picture um, what shoes are you wearing like I need to know everything like how do you like your lashes how do you like your eyebrows and if they keep saying I don't know I don't know I'll ask more questions like okay so what foundation do you own so I ask a million questions it may sound like way too much but it's not like you know you make it in conversation but as I go along and I listen to the answers I will customize the makeup so if halfway they're like yeah I just hate dark eyebrows I'm like okay and I'll just start blending the eyebrows so the more you ask the better you know your client and the better the makeup will come out so thank I have never had anyone hate their makeup. I have had a client like cry, like one of their eyes teared so bad that I had to redo the face makeup, but that's about it. Like it wasn't a hate it kind of thing, it was just the eye was really sensitive, especially with like smoking out lower lash lines, they can get a little sensitive. Do I rush when clients are late? It depends on if I have something right after, if I have somewhere to go or if I have another client. I don't like rushing, so I'll just tell my next client, if possible, they can come a little later. If they totally can't, then I won't rush the makeup, but I will just leave certain things out like a wing liner. Like, wing liners take a while, so if you are super late to your appointment, girl, we're not getting a wing liner. <laughs> if I have nowhere to be, then I don't mind. Like, I will cut into my personal time for my clients, if that makes sense. But if I have another client waiting for me and that person person is late for a big event or something they have to be at it's not fair for them to you know have to wait so I will just customize the late client and just make their makeup a little bit simpler so that I can finish on time and I'll tell them like hey we can't chat right now because you were late and I need to finish you in a certain amount of time so let me put this music up let me bump it up and let's get to it and let's get this makeup on none of my clients have ever like came late and said like I need to be out right now like they are understanding because they know that they're the ones late like I was here waiting you know so they've never done that to me but I would just you know either have like a late fee then if you're finding that a lot of your clients are late um, but I always try to give myself that little break in between just in case someone is 15 20 minutes late it's less time for me to clean up or to eat something or to drink something but at least I won't have my next client waiting for me because I hate that I hate people waiting on me it really like kills me because I know how it feels just to like be sitting there waiting when you have somewhere to be so I try not to you know make anyone lose I try to make it work for everyone what is something I would say to a beginner who wants to freelance I totally have a video on that I will have all those videos listed I have one on like how I started one that's a little more inspirational like one on a freelance makeup kit so there's tons of videos, so if I'm not answering your question, it's because they're answered in those videos. What's a lighting that won't break the bank? I know you use the Glam Core light, but is there anything cheaper that I recommend to travel with? Honestly, the Glam Core, I think, is the most inexpensive light. If you can find a foldable, like, Diva ring light or, like, a, a ring light that's cheaper, then I would say so. But almost any lighting is going to be over $100, something portable anyway. Natural lighting, girl. Natural lighting is the cheapest lighting, so have them sit right in front of the window. Like, if you have to 
make the furniture work you make the furniture work but natural lighting will be your best friend obviously turning on every light available but yeah just investing in a glam core so if it takes one or two clients that you have to save up all that money to pay for the light then pay for the light it's an investment and trust me people will take you a lot more seriously the makeup will come out a lot better you are not risking not matching their face perfectly so it's something you have to invest in think of it as like a foundation like without your light especially if you live in New York where we don't get too much sunlight like constant sunlight if you have this type of weather like gloomy weather then you have to invest in that light like I said it's as important as your makeup kit because if you match them wrong it's not good <laughs> Because if you match a client wrong, I mean, that's just, that's the worst experience for them. You know, they're going to walk out with like a mask on and they're not going to match their body and, or they get flashback or something like that. Lighting is so important when it comes to complexion. Eyes, I feel like not so much. Again, it's important because you don't want them too smoky if they didn't want it too smoky. And without the proper lighting, how will you know what you're doing? So I use a ring light when I'm here in my room, but when I'm going to people, I always bring my glam core, but get it when it's on sale, maybe like Black Friday sales or, you know, they always have sales online but it's worth the investment or maybe Amazon you can check there but I definitely suggest a glam core or like a ring light that um, is portable they have some that you know fold up really nicely in a small case so let's go on snapchat how do you charge your friends how do you charge family and friends so I actually discussed this in my last Q&A because someone had asked me like do you give a discount out most of my friends do makeup so I never really have to do their makeup um, and my family they don't live here but it really depends on how close someone is to you. At the end of the day, it's your money, it's your product, and it's your time. So for me, like if it's a really close family member, I'm not going to charge them. Like if I'm there and I have my stuff with me, I'm not going to charge them. But I don't really get put in that situation that often. Like if you have family members that are constantly asking you, like cousins, maybe charge them like half off or charge them like for the lashes and then like a small amount. But it gets tricky, but at the end of the day, like, it's your business and it's your time. You have to think of it like this, like, if another client wanted that space, are you going to charge them full price? Yes. So, you don't want to lose money. It's tricky because, you know, friends and family feel entitled and, you know, they're like, I have a makeup artist friend or cousin or family member, like, yes, I got to connect. And yes, you should you know help them out but you shouldn't help them out to the point where you're losing out and you're not making anything or you're like not wasting your time because that doesn't sound good but you're losing you know because you have to think of it like this are you still doing a full face of makeup yes are you still putting lashes yes so maybe just give them a small discount or half off or something like that i'm not really put in that situation that often so I'm kind of bad at answering that, but I would say use your judgment. You know, how close are they to you? Are they your best friends? Are you not doing anything that day? Then you kind of just, you know, feel it out. It's not always going to be one set answer, like always give it 20% off. Like that's not how it is. It really just depends on who it is, how close you are to them. What other things you have that day? Are you losing out on your job? Are you taking the day off? Are you using their makeup? Like there's so many different variables. So if you DM me like specific situations, I promise you or message me or Snapchat me, I will answer them a lot better. Someone asked me about the timing of like the client and not rushing. Put literally a timer on your phone and see approximately how long you're taking to do makeup. Give yourself an hour every single time you do makeup or an hour and a half or if you really like to take your time, two hours. Like it depends on your pace as an artist. It depends on how much you're talking because talking will definitely slow you down. If the client really has something really important to do, make sure that it's not right before their pictures that you're doing their makeup. Like do it earlier so that you you're not running into you know this mess of like oh my god I didn't finish or oh my god they're in a rush like give yourself time like explain to your client like I know you don't want to get your makeup done so early but I don't want to make you late I want to make sure that your day goes very smooth the makeup's gonna last girl I got you with the setting spray so and the primers so always earlier is better but if you're running late you know just like I said skip things that you know are gonna take really long like wing liner or you know like adding on five pounds of highlight like First, do the whole face, like if you're in a rush, and then you'll add on little touches that you want to add on. But make sure you have, you know, a full face of makeup on them. <laughs> what do you think is important to take with you when traveling out of the country for a makeup job? Do you think things like a glam core light are necessary? So I definitely think bringing a light is necessary when traveling out of the country. And just your standard makeup case, like your makeup kit, plus some. Because you never know what you're going to get into. A lot of waterproof makeup, a lot of setting sprays, primers, a lot of foundation palettes, lip palettes. Like condense your kit into like smaller things, so like palettes. 
So not so much like little single things, but I don't think bringing a chair is necessary. But I definitely think bringing a light is necessary because you never know what the day is going to be like. You don't know what the weather is going to be like. You don't know where you're going to be doing it, if the lighting is good. So I definitely think bringing a light is necessary. If you're going out the country and you're bringing someone with you or there's someone with you, have them have two carry-ons and you have your carry-ons. I always, this is a question I get, I always, when I do travel out the country with makeup, I bring it on the plane. Like I don't check it in to a luggage, I bring it handheld with me because no one is going to bring my makeup, not on my watch. So you know, you buy travel size setting sprays and you bring that with you because you know, they throw that luggage around and that's all your foundation and all your hard earned money out the window if you check it in. So I personally would never ever check in makeup palettes forget about it they're gonna break so I bring it on with me I know they're both going on the plane but like bring it with me as a carry-on not as a checked in luggage ever so yes I carry my lights and I'll carry on the plane as well like as a carry-on not checking it in because they're gonna bang my light around and that's money down the drain they're not gonna reimburse me for that so I always bring it with me on my hand I'm the one in charge of it so yeah do you ever get nervous when doing someone's makeup? Not anymore. So when I first started, it was so funny, but when I was in it, it wasn't funny, but now looking back, it was funny. I would shake so much, especially when it came to wing liner and lips. I think over time, you know, you kind of get used to the movements, you train your hand to be more steady, and just with experience comes confidence, and the more confident you are, the less nervous you are. Always being over prepared for anything, whether it's you giving a speech or whether it's you doing someone's makeup, the more experience and more time you have in the field, the less nervous you're going to be. I was always nervous when someone asked me for wing liner, but the only way to not be nervous was to just get through it, like was to really practice and to get the right tools to help me make my life easier easier, the right brushes, the right eyeliner, the right cleaning up tools. So yes, I used to get very, very nervous for a while. I'm a very nervous, anxious person to begin with. Um, and it shows, like I'll literally like shake. I don't really have steady hands. I'm always very jittery and I move a lot. So I would get nervous. And the only way you're going to get through it is to become more confident with what you're doing. And the only way to do that is to believe in yourself and to go through it and to experience more. And just over the years, like with the amount of clients that I've seen, which I'm so blessed and thankful for, the nerves have definitely gone away. Like I don't get nervous anymore. I'm just like, yes. We're gonna tackle this, we're gonna beat this face, you know, but that came with time, that confidence came with time, you know. Starting something off, it's very rare that someone's confident first day on the job, you know? You don't know what you're doing, really, you're just, you're diving into something, but the only way to get through that is to just keep it going and keep pushing and just to ignore that nerve and don't think too much of it. Most of the times people don't even know that you're nervous. Play some music, talk, you know, be friendly because if you're nervous and you're really quiet and it shows, like, it's just gonna be a little bit more awkward for them, but yeah. Just be honest with people, communicate, and be friendly, and make it an experience. I feel like even if you're nervous about the makeup, don't be nervous about being yourself. Like, still make the same jokes that you want to make, like, still talk to them, because that's really what's going to make you stand out as a makeup artist. So my girl Bruna asked, let's say you have a wedding to do, and you have to do the bride and a bridesmaid. How do you tackle that with doing everyone's makeup with timing? So now that I do, like, more frequent weddings, I bring Charlene with me, who's my BFF. She's an amazing makeup artist. You have to check her out. She's so good. So if it's like more than four people and they let's say have like four hours, I bring someone with me. Like there's just no way to do it. Like I don't care if you can bang out 50 people. Like good for you. But no one has 50 hours to be doing makeup. Like people don't want to get ready so early. People have photos at one o'clock in the afternoon. You just time everything out. It's good to just write everything out. So if you take an hour on a bridesmaid and two hours on a bride, which is typically what I do. Like I take two hours on a bride because they have a wedding and then like 45 minutes to an hour on a bridesmaid you just give yourself like 20 minutes extra per person because weddings are crazy they get hectic I've had brides say they want to go last I've had brides say they want to go first the best thing to do is to not leave the bride for last trust me I've learned from experience and over time I've made this mistake that I'm like I allow the bride to tell me I want to go last like no I think you should go second to last or third to last is what I always should say because you never want to leave the bride without your full attention. 
So if it means you're not gonna make as much money and you're gonna have to bring someone to do the bridesmaids and you give your bride the most attention, because that's their big day. It's so much more than just a job at that point. You are part of the memory. You are part of what's gonna make or break that day for them. So give them your full undivided attention and don't put them last. If the photographer's coming at three, don't start the makeup at two. Like, trust me, start at 12 because things happen. They're always asking things. Things get crazy, conversations, people get up, they walk away, the photographer gets there early it gets crazy so I just tackle things by just remaining organized and just breathing and just organizing and it's always better to have someone with you because let's just say you really can't do that next person your assistant makeup artist or your makeup artist partner in crime whatever you want to call them will do that and then you can focus on your bride or if you're only doing bridesmaids you can split it up it's always better to have some help and I know a lot of people don't like asking for it but it's always 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 better that way and if you don't have any help well then start really early <laughs> tell them hey I'm sorry to wake you up so early and I know you don't want to get ready so early but that's the only way. If you want everyone to get their makeup done, I can do touch-ups. Once I finish everyone, I'll reapply lips or I'll apply everyone's lip at the end. I guess over time, you just kind of get used to it and you kind of just learn as you go. But never ever leave your bride for last. I've learned the hard way. Please talk a little bit about eyebrows. I hate to say it, but I've seen girls doing the same eyebrow shape and arch. And it's not flattering to the face shape. I get where you're coming from because, you know, with the whole Instagram brow that, you know, blew up. And a bold brow is better brow and thick brows and all that. But I've never really been into super, super blocked brows or dark brows. I just don't think it's flattering. And I think it just comes over time. Like, eyebrows are something that are really, really specific and very personal. Like, some people like them darker, but some people barely want anything on them. It's always better as a makeup artist to go softer, have a client look, and then, you know, ask them, do you like it like that? And then you could go a little bit more if they want a little more. But going bold and then trying to come back from it is so hard to do. I personally like to go dramatic on eyes, but nowhere else. Like the face makeup, keep it natural. The foundation, keep it natural. Still full coverage, but more on the natural side. And eyebrows are one thing that can make or break an eye look. I'd rather the eyes be bold and the eyebrows are just there to kind of like, you know, anchor them. Them. they're there to just support they're not there at the main focus so I think if you're a makeup artist and you feel like you keep doing brows that are super bold and dark remember that the brows are not the focus like yes a clean brow is a good brow but that's what's gonna stand out in pictures and they're not even gonna realize your beautiful eye work or the contour the highlight if they're just staring at the brows and brows can really make or break a look if you're doing too much of a bold brow do the brows at the end because sometimes if you start off with the brows you could just go too bold because you you're putting all your focus and energy and attention and adrenaline into a brow and then it's just gonna be too bold so lighter is always better like lighter strokes not color you know if they have dark hair don't do blonde but like I used to do on myself but you know brow whiz definitely helps brow powder like I barely ever use dip brow on my clients because it's just too bold like yes it's waterproof I'll do it at the end or just like small accents with a dip brow but for the most part powder and brow whiz pencil is all you really need for a good brow communication with your client you know have them look at it and you know they'll I'll tell you if they like it or not. For trial makeup appointments, do you apply the same lashes you're gonna put on them the day of the wedding? As in, do you use the same exact ones for the trial or do you use a new set? I always use a new set. Day of the trial, I put on lashes and I'm charging them for the trial so the price is included with the lash. And then the day of the wedding, I will give them a brand new pair of lashes. I don't think I'd want an older lash put on me for my big day. I don't know, there's just something about a brand new fresh lash that's just always better. I've had clients tell me like, hey, do you want me to save these for the day of? But like, no girl, keep those. That's your and we'll do a brand new lash the day of. It's all about the experience. Think about you sitting in that chair and do you want to bring your lash again? Like, is your makeup ever super popping when you've reused the lash? Or is it more popping when you break up, open a new pair of lashes? You know what I mean? So I like to give them the full-blown experience and I'll bring the same lash again, but I'll bring more just in case they didn't like that one. Oh, throughout the day, I felt like it was a little bit too big or I, my fiance didn't like it or my... Whatever the case is, I always bring more just in case. On clients, you take the foundation down to their neck to match it. I ask because I feel like if someone did that, there would still be an unnatural line. Also, love your videos. So I actually don't really bring foundation all the way down. I'll bring it like up to here and it should just blend in. Like I bring it down just in case, but with all the lights, you know, I have them step in front of the natural lighting. Like I make sure that it blends in. Or what I'll do is I'll take like a lighter powder if I need to fix something. But I don't really like bringing foundation down to here because let's just say they have a dress like this or a cut like this. A lot of people just like 
this doesn't really match, but if you bring it down to the neck, it'll match. Like, no, because if it's not matching, it's still not going to match here, and it's not going to match your shoulders or their arms. Like, the best way is just really to get someone's perfect color. Don't cheat the system and try to bring it down here and think that you're good. Like, no, you're not. So the best thing to do is to match a client to the best of your ability. You could always alter it with concealer, with powders, with bronzers, with cream contours, and all that jazz. But the actual foundation should match. It's always a little bit better to go a little bit lighter in my my opinion a little bit light. like if it's a pinch too light you're not gonna notice if it's a pinch too dark you will definitely notice because you're gonna have that mask so that's my two cents on it some people go darker for their foundations I like to go a little I mean obviously I want the best match but if a client's skin is really hard to match I'll go a little bit lighter or a little bit more yellow because it kind of will oxidize foundations oxidize and they'll turn throughout the day with all the pounds of makeup you're putting on them with the bronzer and the contour and this and the, that and the blush I'd rather the focus really be the eyes and like you know that nice color up here but then here neutral so yeah I don't really bring it down all the way that's a personal choice how do I promote myself to build clientele? I already kind of touched on that. Like, I was posting on Instagram like a mad woman, posting constantly, like doing my own makeup constantly, posting pictures, posting pictures, posting before and afters really gets people to know that you're doing clients. Sometimes if you're just posting clients' pictures, they don't know whose page it is. So I would say differentiate, like really do like the before and afters or like all your client pictures, take them in front of a wall, like one specific wall and have one picture looking up and one picture looking down and have all your client pictures like that. And then all your selfies won't be in that kind of way so that people can differentiate. Okay, she's a makeup artist and like she doesn't have like random people on her page because you know, Instagram is full of like pages that just post other people's pictures, like makeup pictures. So, you know, put like a picture like that says like book me or something like that and also have your bio say that you're a makeup artist and constantly just put yourself out there tell all your friends and family to post your pictures you know if you have to text everyone once do it like if it's annoying who cares whatsapp them like it doesn't matter get yourself out there and the best way possible is also word of mouth make sure each and every client walks out super happy someone asked about like posting on Craigslist but I totally wouldn't I just feel like it is very sketchy and it's not safe for you so I wouldn't do that I would just use Instagram snapchat and like word of mouth I guess you could even do like flyers in your salon or something like that or tell everyone I know it's kind of annoying but like if you go to a hair salon tell them that you're a makeup artist or go with your makeup done and you know they'll ask you most likely and have business cards with you and then they'll give their clients your card like I've had clients that I found at the nail salon or at the hair salon and it's all about you know being very friendly and telling them like in a nice way like not in a pushy way like book me like I'm the makeup artist like no you know someone's like hey I really like your makeup thank you I'm a makeup artist and you know blah blah and get a conversation and you give them your card they'll become a client they'll tell their cousin they become a client so it's all kind of like a trickle effect just making sure that everyone knows your makeup artist without being like obnoxious about it without being like super desperate or like pushy because people don't really like that I guess if you feel like you're not attracting the right clients then the only way to attract the right ones is maybe change yourself up or change your whole like approach to it like if you're just finding clients from a salon then start posting on Instagram and honestly the way you promote yourself is gonna determine a lot of like who you're gonna get to a certain extent this is not only to do with makeup but just in general like if something is priced at a cheaper amount most likely people are going to question it and I'm not saying this like 100% of the times but most likely if it's too good to be true someone's gonna be like well then no like I want it even lower because I don't believe in it you gotta like price yourself you gotta put your worth on the table you know you gotta really believe in yourself and you gotta be confident in your work and then the more you do that the better everything will be like trust me if you think of yourself as someone like oh I just started like I'm not that good like chances are your clients are gonna be like hey I don't want to pay that because everything can be read even if they don't know you like things like that can be read by certain people so I don't think it's necessary to like pay for advertisements or to put yourself out there in a non safe way so maybe grab like five of your friends and do their makeup and post those pictures on Instagram or on Facebook whatever social media you use and have them you know go out in public with the makeup and maybe someone will ask them like hey who did your makeup or have them post pictures on their social media saying you know that you did their makeup and your email in wherever they're posting it so just know that makeup artists that have made it or that you know do have a big clientele they started somewhere too and if they can do it you can do it like you just literally have to put in that work to build a portfolio if you have to you know take your friends or your family or your mom or your 
yourself and you're gonna be doing different looks on them if that's what it takes and that's what it takes then take that time out of your day and do someone's makeup and post those pictures and no one has to know that they're not clients like just constantly post different makeup looks different faces because if someone sees someone that they look like on your channel like oh look she has she does makeup on like hooded eyes like I, I have hooded eyes like she knows how to do my makeup the more you promote yourself in a free way like it doesn't have to be paying for it like the more you post on social media the more people post about you on social media the more clientele you're gonna get the more people are gonna know about you so yeah that's pretty much my take on it so those were today's questions I'm gonna actually save the rest of them so maybe I could do like a part two because there's still so many other questions that I haven't even gotten to so thank you to everyone who sent me a question there's a quote on Instagram it goes something like you can be a work of art and a masterpiece at once and I really really love that because there's always more to learn there's always more improvement there's always something that you can work on and better worthy yourself believe in yourself but also humble yourself and know that you know there's so many other people doing this and there's so much more to learn be personable and people will believe in you be a good person and people will believe in you and people will come back i truly believe that working on yourself as a person is truly so important if you own your own business if, you know if you open up a coffee shop like the experience is what's going to get people to come back you may have the greatest coffee but if you have shitty customer service like people are not going to go to you same thing when you're a makeup artist you are your own business you are the whole experience Yes, the makeup too, but the experience, the customer service, how you treated someone, you know, the way you spoke to them, that matters, and it matters a lot. So I'm kind of melting right now, and my eyebrows are still healing from the microblading, so I'm gonna go. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful and you learned something. Let me know what you thought, and if you have any other questions, leave them down below, because I'm definitely gonna do a part two to this. I have some other questions that I didn't answer in this one, which I'll be answering in that one, but if you have any other ones, let me know, or Snapchat me if it's something very personal and specific, because I would love to help. Thank you for watching this video, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys.